Hi everyone, David Aragona here with Craig Milkowski, and we are looking at one of four graded stakes taking place on Saturday at Belmont Park. This is race nine on that Saturday card, the grade three Belmont Turf Sprint Invitational going six furlongs on the inner turf course. And Craig, as we pull up the field for this race, there's a field of nine signed on, and I've got to ask you, where are all the turf sprinters with speed? Yeah, I was a little uh, surprised when I saw the field for this race, uh, particularly since it's just a six furlong race, not at seven. But yeah, not not a whole lot of speed showed up in this one. Maybe it's because the Breeders' Cup is at um, Del Mar this year and it's going to be a bit shorter race. But uh, yeah, it was none in here. So who knows being a, a Naira race if the speed horses would have showed speed anyway. But uh, yeah, I would like to see a little more pace for sure. And I do think it's going to uh, compromise a few horses in here as well. Yeah, as you can see from my morning line, it's a pretty competitive field. I made back to his roots the slight favorite of three to one over Pulsate. Both of those horses that we're going to have to get some early position because as we look at this time form US pace projector, the two horses that are shown on the front end, Pulsate and Belgrano, not exactly front running types. Maybe Pietti Bianchi goes to the front from the rail. She's a mare who's competing against the boys here as a long shot, but I was reading some reporting that she's cross entered in a different race uh, for Indiana bred, so she might not even run here. So especially if she comes out, there's just not any speed signs on. So trips and being close to the pace, I think is going to be of the utmost importance, Craig. Yeah, and we talked about this before. Sometimes when when the speed of the race is not really speed, it's not as uh, hard for the closers because they're just naturally up into the race soon. So I do think this is going to be an interesting race, particularly if the one scratches out, it's going to be really tactical. And as you mentioned, the two shown up front, Pulsate and uh, Belgrano on the Timeform US pace projector, actually are assigned running styles and Timeform US PPs of mid-pack and tracker. So it's not like they're the kind that just rush to the front and even want to be there. Let's start going through the contenders with a couple of horses that are coming out of the lucky coin stakes from the end of the Saratoga meet. Let's take a look at the replay of the stretch run of that race from Saratoga and Pulsate gets the better of back to his roots in this race. But Craig, I know that we both kind of agree back to his roots is the one that we both want out of this race. Yeah, he had all kind of problems at the start of this race, and he was just flying at the end, and he even had some trouble during the race as well, not just the start. That race was, I believe, his first time as a gelding, and, and he showed some uh, pretty good form, and, and he's a horse who had run some decent races last year, but if he improves on those, he's going to look really strong in here. Yeah, he was on the upswing coming into this Belmont Turf Sprint last year when he unfortunately stumbled to the start and lost the rider in that race. He was coming off an impressive victory at Saratoga last year and took him almost a year to get back, but I agree with you. He had real trouble at the start last time. I don't think he has to be quite as far back as he was that day. And I would imagine with Luis Saez coming back to ride him here, he's going to try to have him a bit closer to the pace this time. Though Pulse, I think he makes sense once again. Uh, he goes out for low-profile connections, Bobby Roboto, so he doesn't always take the money that he probably should often goes off at a generous price but pulsate has a bit more tactical speed than back to his roots so we could get the jump on him once again like you i think back to his roots had some more upside coming second off the layoff here but i think pulsate's a contender as well yeah, I have no problem with Paul Seda. I just think back to his roots is probably a little bit a better horse. And that's why, as we'll talk about a little later, I made him my top selection here. But I do think this is a pretty wide open race. Let's take a look at another horse that has some high speed figures coming into the race, but might have some trouble negotiating the turn back and distance. And that's the number five therapist who's coming out of a narrow loss against New York breads in the West Point up at Saratoga. Let's take a look at the stretch run of that race. And Craig, personally, for my money, I thought therapist had everything go right in his in this race. There was a wicked pace up front. A rabbit went after the early leader, Rinaldi, and set it up for the closers. Irad Ortiz gave this horse a great ride, and he just lost to his Christoph Clement on trade stable date. Yeah, as you said, it was a perfect setup for him. He was far back off what was a fast pace. Uh, the pace fraction or pace figures in time form US even cracked a 160 mark. So he had everything his way, just couldn't get up. And personally, though, Therapist is a horse who has run well in these shorter dashes earlier in his career. I'm not sure it's the right move for him now as a six-year-old. He doesn't seem to have the same speed. And maybe if it were turned back to seven furlongs, I'd have a little more interest in him. But six just seems a bit too far 
back to me. And, and I think he's going to get lost in the shuffle here. Yeah, we're on the same page about this. He's a horse that there's always been this narrative about him that he wants to go shorter and the connections are making some kind of mistake by continuing to run him in these route races. And like you said, he did achieve some sprint victories against lesser competition very early in his career. But I think recently he's run all of his best speed figures in longer races. And the key for therapists to me is not so much the distance, it's the pace. And you see those red color coded time form US pace figures last time. He got the pace that he needed in that race, ran a high for him, 121 time form. A speed figure and he does have a resume of speed figures that make him a little bit faster than this field i just feel like that doesn't matter so much in this sprint race because like you said craig he's sprinted in the past and just seems to drop too far out of it in the early going and in a paceless race like this i think that can really spell trouble for him let's move on to the next contender Arrest Me Red, who uh, is kind of a three-year-old actually facing older horses. He's coming out of a victory in the Mahoney Stakes at Saratoga. And Craig, I thought this was a really nice step forward off his two-year-old form in his first start for Wesley Ward as we take a look at the stretch run of him winning this race narrowly. Yeah, it was a good return to the races. He had been off quite a while, uh, the red line uh, in time form USPP, so more than 180 days. My problem with him is he didn't run much of a speed figure, and Wesley Ward's not the kind of guy that's going to bring a horse back not fully ready to go. I mean, that's not his MO, so I think what we saw that day is what we get from him. He is a three-year-old, so he He's stepping up in competition quite a bit here, and I just think he's going to be an underlay. Yeah, I'm not sure that I want a relatively short price on him, and he could be that for Wesley Ward with Irad Ortiz riding, but I did think he ran well last time, and while that didn't seem like the strongest race at the time, we saw a couple of horses come out of that race, including runner-up Fauci run well in a grade two next time at Kentucky Downs. Also, fourth-place finisher Momos came back and just barely lost another race in that division at Belmont Park with an improved speed figure, so that Mahoney Stakes might be a stronger race than it seemed at the time, and I don't totally discount Arrest Me Red because he does have some tactical speed. I thought went to a different lightly raced horse, and that's the four-year-old number four by land and sea. And as we take a look at the time form USPPs of this horse, he's got to get a little bit faster, obviously. His top career speed figure of 109, just not quite high enough to get it done here. But that was when he was a three-year-old. Now he's coming back off a layoff as a more mature four-year-old, and he's also getting a trainer switch to Anthony Dutro. And Craig, I know that I've been talking about this a little bit, and you're aware of it as well. Anthony Dutro has been having a fantastic year across the board, and I'm very interested in this horse getting into his barn. Yeah, this is a horse. I mean, we we send our picks in, and I didn't make him my top pick, but I gave him some pretty strong consideration. And based on that morning line, this could be very well be a horse that I end up betting. Uh, as you mentioned, his career best was a 109, but that happened back, back in October of his three-year-old year. This is a year later, so he should come back a stronger, faster horse. And it's hard to dismiss the uh, the trainer switch. Uh, nothing against Steve Glossaris, who who's had a long and – good career, but he's not at the level of Anthony Dutrow is currently. And I would expect to move up from here. And if this one comes back ready, I expect a big run. Yeah, this horse has always had ability. He reeled off three consecutive victories between his two-year-old and three-year-old season. And while he lost that last race at Belmont Park about a year ago, he faced some good horses in there like Get Smoke and Decorated Invader. No disgrace losing to those runners. And I don't mind him turning back to a sprint off the layoff. I watched his last workout on XBTV over the Belmont Turf course, was really impressed by that. And also, I found a stat for Tony Dutrow just kind of narrowing down his good year over the past uh, over the past 12 months down down to just turf races he's five for 20 over the past year on the turf 25 percent that roi is so high because he had a 97 to 1 winner in there so don't pay too much attention to that but what i'm most interested in is out of these 20 starters actually seven additional horses finished second so he's 12 for 20 finishing in the exacta on the turf and competing on the naira circuit that's pretty impressive yeah, that's uh, going to be hard to beat. Like you say, you could forget that uh, ROI, but it, even if you did some kind of median, it would still be uh, well above profitable for him. So let's throw up our picks for this race. Craig, you went a bit more logical taking the number two back to his roots. I think that this is the horse to beat. If he improves on his last race with a cleaner start, I think he just makes a lot of sense in here. Yeah, he was my top pick, but like I said, I'm 
pretty torn on here. I could bet any of three horses. Uh, he could be one I've already talked about by land and sea, so I don't want to dwell on that one too much. And I actually think Belgrano, who we haven't really talked about much, is seems to be in career best form as a seven-year-old right now. He's run two big races last two times out, one turning back, uh, so he won at a mile. And anytime you win a turf race by six lengths, it's worth noting because that doesn't happen all that often. He turned back, won that small stakes at Monmouth with an even better figure. So I expect him to run well, and he's eight to one on your morning line. So for me as a vertical player, I'll pro probably be using all three of these in exactas and, and shop for some value on the win end. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Belgrano because he's a horse that I wanted to mention as well. You see him, I have him on my picks a little bit lower in fourth. Uh, I was impressed as well by his win at Monmouth last time. I think he's just in great form right now. And given his distance versatility, I'm I'm not that concerned about him trying the six furlongs for the first time at Belmont Park. So he's one that I would definitely use at a price. Uh, but I put by Land and Sea on top, who we just talked about. Price is going to be key for him. I put him at 10 to 1 on the morning line. I would need a price in the 8 to 10 to 1 range on him. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to bet this race because it's very evenly matched field, but he would be a price play for me in this Belmont Turf Sprint Invitational. So that's just a look at this race, but there are three other graded stakes at Belmont on Saturday. There are stakes previews by Dan and Mike that you can check out on DRF's YouTube channel. And if you're playing on Saturday, good luck.